Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies come superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus... From the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in-flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shay's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choose the right chapter.com 99.9 KISW the rock of Seattle there's a woman in New York City and she found a hole behind her bathroom mirror so she decided oh, I wonder what's on the other side and she climbed in found a whole other apartment and yeah, uh, like there's like she just went downstairs I mean it's not just like a small little studio it's like a full on apartment that's behind the bathroom mirror yeah she put the whole thing on tiktok and it's become a viral hit you can listen to her discover the whole thing right here let me show you what i found in my new york city bathroom i realized the mirror moves there's a room back there what if someone's living in there right now i have to go in what is on the other side of my bathroom it's freezing in here wow this is a whole other planet. made it out alive my landlord's getting a really fun phone call tomorrow <laughs> wow! Right? It's like the, the the hole is not that big. It's maybe like a couple feet by a foot and a half. So she had to like crawl into that. But then she also saw like a, a bottle, so like a, a beverage bottle. And they were like, "Well, someone's been in there." So then there's like that. Well, someone like uh, you know what I mean? Like what's, oh, what kind of creepy stuff possibly? Yeah, because they could get to her apartment too. Right? Because she had. I think there's like a door on the other end. And some people are like, why'd you say anything? You got a whole other apartment now. Like, just. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's a good the dilemma. point. You're in New York, you know, like, space is very limited and you're paying a lot of money probably for a very small amount of space. Part of me would be like, just knock out the wall and don't tell anyone. What the heck do you think it was used for? It was it's, it's like really murdering people. It's, you know, oh, like, kind of a horror film. Oh, see, I was thinking it was like for people on the run. Like, you know, back in the oh, days when you're trying to like, you're wow. on the lamb. Yeah, look at it right there, BJ. You can see yeah, it. There's that yeah, hole. It's nuts. I'm seeing that now and it's like, that is pretty wild. So that is, I think it was for, I, I think maybe it was either, either A, it was like maybe for, I wonder for prohibition or something like that or a secret drug making business or if you're on the run and nobody can find out where you are. Um, you know, I was if 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 it was like in, in some other country, maybe during some times where people were persecuted, it would be a place to hide those folks. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess there's a disconnected toilet on that end, uh, exposed pipes, and a few trash bags and some boxes as well. Wow. Yeah, I would just totally make a door and have that just be another room. I don't know. <laughs> I love that being the secret room. You know, yeah. I, I would love to get like one of those big bookshelves that swing open. You know, like oh, like the yeah. bat, like going into the bat cave. Or just a big mirror, and you, just, you could open it up. Like it looks like a full length mirror, but then you just whoop. Oh yeah, come into my secret lair. That's Ooh. yeah, that's creepy and awesome at the same time. Yeah, what would, would you? I, okay, if you see that, would you say anything to anyone, or would you just be like, "Well, chalk this up to a, a bigger apartment now." Yeah, if I, you know, no. just get a couple of portable heaters and do it. Vicky's like, "No, not at what? all." Well, you're a girl, and you probably have 
valid concerns to be worried. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like some creepo could be going in there. Yeah, I don't know who's hanging out. If there's like an entrance, another entrence I don't know about. And pe- like, I one examine the mirror to make sure it's not one of those two way mirrors. Yeah. Right. Oh wow, look at Vicky's like, what? Wait, wait a second, what's been going on here? That's a fair thing to think about, especially if they saw like a random bottle that was in there, which could have been like before her time, obviously. Right. And I think there is a trick to finding a two way mirror. It's like you have to touch the mirror, and if your fingers touch or don't touch, it just tells you if it's a two way mirror. Like if you're in a dressing room or something, there's a lot of skeevy things that I'm like, what's wow. going on? Oh, in this situation, at least you could just take the mirror off and look and see. Right, if you exactly. Through, you know, it's a two way mirror, but I didn't even think about that. Mm mm. Vicky, how do you even know all this stuff that you would like? I mean, how are you I mean, really? I mean, do you go touch all the mirrors? Are you that worried? Well, like, there's a lot of I fall like safety things for ladies and stuff, and they give you these tips and tricks so you make sure that you're safe. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to live in a world like that. I get that you know some people are nervous about stuff, but gosh, man, then you're running around testing every mirror because you think there's a creep on it. There's there's really not that many creeps in the world. I know they exist, but. You know, nine times out of ten, you're okay. But, you know, I guess, I mean, whatever you got to do to feel comfortable. Oh, yeah, Vicky, show me. I guess if you put your finger up to a mirror, an ordinary glass has a gap between the reflection when touched. So even when you're touching the mirror, you'll still have, like, a little bit of a gap between the reflection finger and your other finger. If it's a two-way mirror, it, the finger would look like it's touching the reflection mirror. Oh. oh now now I gotta, now, now oh. Vicky's got me touching all my mirrors. I gotta go find out. What are you worried I about? I think you're safe. Yeah, no one's well, spying on spy- you, man. What if I'm spying on myself and I don't know because I forgot? Oh my god, that actually would be you. If yeah, anyone knew that happened to, it would be you. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want to well, see what I'm. I want to see what I'm up to. You never know what I'm doing. Well, it wasn't a mirror, but I still remember the time that my buddy and I did not realize that the 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 the, the person that worked at the hotel was had security cameras in front of them, so they could just watch you like in the lobby and different places. So we were. This is in college. I went back for a homecoming and my buddy Kyle and I decided we're going to take some ecstasy and we're going to go play in the 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 whatever like the the hell is it uh, the handball not handball but paddle ball squash yeah, ping pong like the paddle ball like those rooms like those uh, rooms that have racquetball racquetball thank oh, you okay yeah completely close but this hotel had a racquetball room so we rented out the the paddles and all that stuff and then we, they also give you like the goggles to protect your eyes. So we never even made it into the pad, the racquetball room because we were just rolling so hard that then we just decided to poke each other in the eyes with the goggles on and giggle at each other for like a good twenty minutes. We're just like, oh my god, poking each other's eyes. I can't get my eyes, man. Thinking it's the funniest thing. We go back we're like I don't really feel like playing racquetball. Let's just go bring these back. And so we bring them back, and the, the there was like a group of people just dying laughing that worked at the hotel, and they're like, "How is racquetball?" And we're like. What? They're like, we have surveillance cameras, and we watched you two just poke each other in the eyes for like the last 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, so, well, if there's a time to be spied on, that's the time. Uh, wow. Yeah. And you, you, what are you going to do? You're going to go, yep, that's us. We're rolling. Hey, someone says, as you guys know, and Rev, I think you've been to the McMenamins, the new hotel in Tacoma. Yes, absolutely. There's a secret bar there? Yeah, yeah. It's called The Vault, and you literally have to go through fake walls. Oh, in so order it's not to get a secret there. anymore. We've just... Well, I mean, it's a, it's the secret that's not a secret. Like, everybody yeah. knows about it, but the fun is trying to find it because, like, if you're going for the full experience, nobody's going to tell you where it is. You just got to figure it out yourself. So you have oh. to go through one of the uh, stairwells, and there's just a indescript wall. You just push, and it opens up, and then it goes down to a longer hallway, and then you go into the vault. It would be cool to have a secret room in your house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and Mox, of course, you know, Mox Boarding House in Bellevue has that whole secret room that is, uh, that's behind a bookcase, which yeah, is pretty the, cool. the speakeasy room. Yeah. I, I, I what do are they doing in that like room? That. Well, it's just a private room you can rent out for private parties. Gotcha. But you, you, but the thing is, is, you know, you wouldn't know there's a room there. It's pretty awesome, actually. That's yeah. what I want to do for, because uh, I have a little bit of an upstairs above my uh, garage slash studio, and I want to take that door, take it off, and put in a bookshelf case. Do it. That will be a fake thing. Yeah, I, I, eventually, I'm not very um, good at making things, so i got to figure out and maybe find somebody to do it for me, because I'm not going to be able to do it myself. Oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's a guy that actually can make that happen for you, dude. you gotta find a, you got to find a guy. Oh, there's oh. a video of, uh, is that the secret bar in, at McMinnimans? Yep. That's pretty cool. Oh, there you cool. go. Yeah. Oh, there's the, yep, there you go. It's got nice graffiti on the walls. Pretty sweet. All right, check yeah. it out. We're, we're, it's down in Tacoma, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, the uh, McMinnimans Elk Lodge. 
And they got nice. one also, I think, in Bothell, but it's a little bit different. It's based in a school. Yeah. That they turned into like hotels and I, a pool I, and all that fun I've stuff. I've actually gotten to go there for somebody's birthday. I heard it's awesome. Yeah, so there's cool. multiple restaurants outside. They have like little fireplace section, like a, a nice area for you and a group of friends to hang out. And then my favorite part was that they, they, they had this tiny little bar yep, in the principal's office. So you oh, so call it the principal's office? I think so, or something oh, that's like that. Great. So you go in, it looks like the principal's office is tiny and it's like it's kind of awesome to think that you're having a drink at the principal's office. I had to. The old uh the old swimming pool there, they turned into the tiki bar. Awesome. Yeah, and it's like the wood shop is uh, the sports bar. Like it's a really really cool place. McMinimins does some really fun things with like basically old historical buildings. And they have really really good food. Mm-hmm. Like ridiculously good. Oh, someone said that if I text my mom, just built a custom house. All of the doors are secret and hidden. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I love that. I do love that. Now, but what if you're drunk and you forget where the actual door is? And you're just sitting down, you're just like <laughs> slamming into your own walls. Like, I swear my bedroom's behind this bookshelf. Yeah, you're probably going to have to have somebody have the, uh, the, the floor plan or something. But you don't have to give it to everybody so that people can have the slamming into thing experience. Now, we're talking about all these cool things we could do to our home, and there's a new home trend that I, if anybody on this show thinks, yeah, I'm going to do this, um, it's a design that they say has been growing for the fast, for the past few years, and it's called an open concept bathroom. What? And that is uh-huh. a bathroom without a door. Has anybody even heard? I've never even heard of this. Dude, I hate going to bathrooms where they don't have stall doors. You think I want right? to do that in my own home? No. I this is money to- for this house. Give me a damn door. The other, this is a new concept. They're what saying it's you know driving. starting it's starting to be in more homes where the toilet, the shower are just right out there in the open, no option for any privacy. Matter of fact, uh, in in Boston, a house just hit the market and it has one of these bathrooms. It looks just like a living room. It's got the same flooring as a living room. It's got no door. Got the same decor as a living room. And there's a toilet Dude. right in the middle, just like that. It's just right there. If I walked in this, like, say, your buddy invites you over, they come on over, and I'm looking at this, and it's got like a frosted glass that separates the toilet from like the sink in the in the quote unquote bathroom, but then oh, nothing else. Wow, that's just crazy. And I mean, and there's like no ventilation. It's like yeah, yeah everything can just get window, right out. At least. But yeah, like, w- wow. I mean, that's I mean, oi, oi, oi. We I don't mean, need this. No, I mean, oh, did all. everybody think this is as crazy as when somebody finally had indoor plumbing and they, and people thought that's business you do outside? There's no way you should bring that in the house. I mean, is, is, are we going to all look like no. that kind of person this in is, years? This is going to be a niche kind of a thing. There's not going to be a lot of people. I think they're going to be down with this idea because if I went when we were looking for a house and I went into a, a place and like sometimes you just have to accept. Okay, this isn't part of the house. All right, maybe one day I'll put this in. But if I walked in and I'm like, hey, where's the door for the shower? Because it's the shower. It's the toilet and the sink, and it's just like right there in this old pan. I'm like, no, absolutely not. Put a door on there. <laughs> Put a door on it. You know, right? you know what also kind of pisses me off is the fact that they have such a big space for a bathroom, door or no door, and they didn't use like they didn't put a bathtub in it. So it's not even a full bathroom. Oh, that's what pisses Vicky off. Not yeah. the fact that everyone's going to watch her do her business. <laughs> yeah, but it looks more sleek because everything's glass. Right, but it's such a waste of space. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, this open floor plan business, we've seen it in our workplace. I mean, our whole office is all open and, you know, people that have offices don't have doors. It's, it's, so, I mean, Steve, I think they're trying to push this down our throat for some reason, even though nobody has purchased this house. There's a real estate agent that says, yeah, I've, I got it on the market and he's been showing it, but, uh, people are just like, I uh, don't see me living in a space where I'm pooping out in the open. I like one texture just said, my wife would divorce me if we had a place like that from all the nasty things that come out of my body. Yeah. yeah. Dude, like, I couldn't even imagine if I'm just sitting there and my wife comes home from like getting groceries or just come, going to CrossFit or whatever she's doing she comes home and now I'm just sitting there like hey babe how was CrossFit did you hit your PR uh, yeah I dropped my BM uh, is it because of the, there are couples that go to the bathroom with the door open like they don't shut it anymore and that's the people they're serving I think it honestly is uh, the open concept for houses in the last few years have been really popular so that's why you'll see kitchens that like are open with the living room and the dining room there's no walls anymore so i feel like this was just them trying to be like oh we're going to take it one step further we're going to be ahead of the crowd and made this monstrosity you know some ideas aren't good ideas no yeah i mean you need walls for something i mean we 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 have had walls for a long time and this is why we don't really aren't, aren't big fans of group bathrooms like at workplaces because yeah you have a wall so no one can see you but everything else is part of that bathroom experience 
is visible. I mean, you know, you can hear things. You know, your olfactory system gets exposed to everybody's fun times. And nobody really likes that. It's just, well, what else are you going to do? You were in the workplace. You got to go to the bathroom. But you don't want that in your home, do you? Well, even one person said, these idiots clearly don't have kids. I think about that now. Like, just oh. having, having Tatum. Because, like, usually when I go number one, I just walk in. Door's still open. You know, I have to remind myself when, like, we have people over. Like, oh, I should probably close the door. They don't want to hear me, you know. But, but, like, I'll just do that. I'm like, well, there's going to come a point where I'm probably going to have to make sure my door is locked when I'm going in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Plus, yeah, she's going to, you know, she's going to be 14 years old. And you're going to go, what do you mean? We got to close the door now? Right. Yeah, this Dad, I, you should have closed it about 10 years ago. I have uh, some people over at Wolf Custom Design sent us a text saying, hey, hit us up. We, we do that kind of stuff when it comes to, like, secret doors and stuff. Ooh, nice. All right, Rev, start saving your money, buddy. Yeah, save their start. pennies. Yeah, I'm so we got a Facebook page, man. It's some cool stuff. These guys are oh. talented. Oh yeah, Wolf I knew there were people out there. They even make birdhouses. Oh, birdhouses. Forget about it. Forget That's it. a little random. <laughs> he's like, well, Forget do I want a secret it. room or a birdhouse? Ah, uh, you know what? I'll figure it out. Maybe I want my secret room in the birdhouse. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, can you do that, Wolf Custom Designs? We got a news reporter that was doing a report on thefts when a group of guys actually steal his video camera. Oh, yeah. You're going to hear from this reporter at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm-fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream, deformed trees, mutated wildlife, and no humans for miles. Ten years after the disaster at Fukushima, see what this irradiated ecosystem can teach us about nuclear fallout on Radioactive Forest. Plus, looking for the most diverse marine life on the planet? Dive into the Coral Triangle and experience a frenzy of wildlife you've got to see to believe on nature's greatest secret. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, we got some more excellence in broadcasting. We got to go down to uh, good old uh, San Francisco. TV news reporter was robbed of his camera at gunpoint while conducting an interview about car break ins in San Francisco. Sheesh. Yeah, but talk about irony of that one. Uh, KPIX reporter Don Ford said he was preparing to interview residents about a string of thefts when four men pulled up. And here's Don talking about what happened. The car came up here while we're about to do an interview. Three guys jumped out. One had a gun, put it up to my face and said, we're taking the camera. My whole thought at the moment was, let's be calm. Let's not get this guy excited. He's got the gun. I don't. So you take the camera. It's yours, buddy. I'm not sure my adrenaline has settled down yet. Yeah, I'm taking the rest of the day off. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. some of these reporters really got nerves of steel. We've played audio of reporters talking while gunfire is happening behind them. Like nothing's phasing them. But I'd be like, hey, boss, I'm going to go hit the bar. Someone just pulled a gun on me for the camera. Yeah, I've never had a real gun pointed at my face like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, yeah, you take whatever you want, especially if it really isn't mine. It's the TV station's camera. So I'm not really losing anything here. Right. I'm like, look, man, I know you guys have me doing the stuff on the field, but I'm not taking a bullet for this gig. And it turns out they had a tracking device on the camera. So that was kind of cool. So they ended up recovering it on Wednesday. Uh, yet no arrests yet. So, what do, I, mean, I mean, what do these geniuses think they were going to do with the camera? You pull up and put a gun on a guy and, you know, and then all of a sudden the camera's found. And so... Amateur porn. <laughs> oh, I hadn't thought about oh, the yeah. amateur porn. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you got to steal a camera because, you, you know, that moment happens very quickly. Well, I mean, I'm not clicking on that thumbnail that was recorded on a cell phone. I mean, geez, come on. Up, yeah. the, up the production level, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You want, you want HD. Come on. HD. Wow. 
All right. So um, as we roll through 2021, a lot of folks are wondering, oh, man. Uh, and we've talked about like things that you miss. And of course, people miss concerts and they're like, when are they going to come back? Uh, Live Nation, the big concert promoter, uh, they say they are planning to host uh, uh, some outdoor amphitheater shows by midsummer. Yeah. And they're pretty optimistic that they think that events can return to regular capacity soon after the vaccine becomes widely available, which the, the president said he thinks that a lot of us can have it by the end of May. That's what I heard. Which I mean, it doesn't feel like we're. I don't know. I'm not really paying a ton of attention because I'm like, oh, I'll find out when my, you know, when when it gets to the, our point in our age level or whatever. But like, I don't feel like things are going super fast. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy about that. And they finally did open it up to grocery workers. I know that a lot of grocery workers and retail workers were not happy when they were like, well, we got to give it to other people that are essential. And they're like, what are you talking about? We're as essential as there is, anybody can be. I did get a, not a chuckle, but I was just like, huh, that's interesting. That I went to an Albertsons and it was like, well, I'm like, why are all these old people just milling about this one little area? And I realized, oh, they're all getting the shots. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, oh, if you're a grocery worker, you probably like feel like this is just like in the pr- in present middle finger being sent to you like here we are oh, we yeah. have to give the shots to this group of people that are in our area but we're not getting the shots so uh when's that going to happen well listen they can want to host these amphitheater event- events that's for sure um and they're going to have to be outdoor indoor action i mean you know where well, who knows i mean maybe maybe you know at the tail end of this year or into next year Dude, what maybe if they we'll get, like, have indoor events i've been hearing about like some places are getting like this like crazy like filtration systems put into their like indoor venues like that that supposedly help you know s- s- uh, get the air cleaner quicker well, yeah, and I know Alaska Airlines, and maybe it's 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 kind of like what Alaska's been doing on their planes, where they have these great HEPA filter systems, and they're filtering that air constantly so that you know everything gets trapped because those HEPA filters will trap like ninety nine point something percent of all bacteria and viruses. So, you know, maybe that's what these concert systems are thinking of doing. Maybe the airports have already started doing that. Well, I know this is why I remember because I, I saw a Facebook post. There's that place Doofers in Renton, that place that I love that have incredible food, but they just it's called the Global Plasma Solution where they said that we just installed additional air filtering systems at Doofers and it kills 99.4% of all airborne coronavirus pathogens. And so they've got to keep that, they got to keep the fan going. Obviously, like, you know, in, in your house, you know, you could have the, the hot air or the cold air, depending on what's going on, or you just keep the fan circulating in order for you basically to get that air through that filter. And that must be what they're going to do. Because if you walk in a mall or if you go into a store, do you feel how cold it is because they're just blasting the air because they're circulating the hell out of that? I didn't even notice that. No. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, well, you know me because I'm a professional mall walker. Right. We um, actually went to the Bellevue Mall for some reason. I can't remember why, but oh, we were I like, I wonder this. if we're going to see BJ walking around. Yeah, and, you and know, I'm, I'm su- I was very disappointed. Didn't. You should have let me know. I want to make sure it was part of my, you know, routine because sometimes I go to Factoria, you know, and I, I like to mix it up. We did see some other walkers. You can tell now. I'm starting to, I'm, I'm being more, I'm paying more attention ever since you, you've, you've alerted me to that this is actually a thing. I thought it was just you being you, but you're like, oh no, they're actual mall walkers. And oh, and, you can tell. Oh they're, yeah. The per- they're, they're always hugging the perimeter and you just go, did that guy, he looks like he's going to go to the Nordstrom. No, he's actually doing a bad turn and not going to the Nordstrom. He's going in the other direction. Yes. Then you know, professional mall walker. Yeah, so, uh, you know, man, uh, we, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed, obviously, because a lot of folks love concerts. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I don't know, Live Nation is saying maybe by summer, maybe. Well, I've seen some places are now putting on some live music in their establishment, obviously with, like, a, a small capacity that can be there and socially distance and all that. Like, you can't just be pressed up against the stage screaming and yelling. As a oh, really? Guys oh. singing and spitting all over you. But Oh, come on. But it's nice to even just see some of the local bands having the opportunity to get to perform again because on addition to seeing concerts i miss playing concerts i mean i miss being able to like get up on stage and, you know I, I like to wait until you have a full room and you can safely do that because that's just part of the fun it's just like that 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 energy of a crowd as opposed to i never was a fan of playing music and seeing people just sit and watch it's just such an oh, awkward yeah. feeling for me yeah well, like you said, Steve, I don't, and I'm not even going to try to get the vaccine until it's relatively easy to get it. I, 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 I tried one time going online. My doctor said I was eligible, but when I went online and answered the questions, they said I wasn't eligible. And I said, I'm done. And then I heard the stories <laughs> I about. I give up. I did because I heard stories about people that would have hours they drive and then they'd wait hours for an appointment. Then the vaccine wasn't there. And so the appointment was canceled. I was like, oh, you know what? I don't need that. I've been, I've been living this quarantine life for the year. I can wait a little longer. Mm-hmm. Rather than go wait somewhere and be pissed, which you know me. I mean, you know. You, like, you impatient? Yeah. Never. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'll just be well, like, all that, right, I'll, I'll keep living the way I'm living until they say, just go down there and get a shot. They might bump you ahead, though. They're like, get this guy out of here. Let's hurry up. Just give him the damn shot and get him out of here. Oh, Shoot it on his tongue, so maybe he'll stop talking. Oh, you know, Steve, I have tried the annoyance route in the world of customer service Doesn't before. Doesn't work. No, it, 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 you, you just find that somebody urinates on something of yours at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's really <laughs> what it gets that, you. That wasn't a vaccine that we've injected no, you with. No, it wasn't. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Uh, all righty. Well, I feel a little bit more saltier than I usually do. Okay, that's even... All right, so uh, we got a new poll, and uh, what they ask people is, uh, okay... Um, you know, how messy are you? Oh, and, uh, Why are you looking at me? I'm, yeah. I'm cleaner than I used to be. And it, what they found out, you know, maybe people didn't want to go out and say how or how messy they weren't. But they all, the four out of five Americans did admit that they do have one spot in their home that they know, oh, yeah, that's the mess spot. That is always a mess. And the average is higher than that. So I'm wondering, how many spots in your home do you think uh, you go, okay, this would qualify as my mess spot. Like, this is a mess, and I wouldn't want people to see this. Does the car count as part of your home? I mean, Grant, it's in the garage. Because that, to me, is that's my mess spot. My wife will give me a hard time. I'm not, like, so bad where I have, like, a bunch of, like, old food wrappers on the floor and, like, you know, like, where you can't sit in the car. But it's not, it's not clean. I don't really do a very good job of dusting it. You know, my wife wipes down her car and does all like she oh, details yeah. her car all the time. Whereas yeah. I'm just like, eh, you know, what, what does it matter? Um, so I'd say that that's my mess spot, and then the garage. I, I mean, you know, I just those are your spots. Yeah, that funny? that's where those my hockey the- gear is. That's where my drums are. I don't really have like a very. I need to get better and organized, but I just haven't had the energy or the time or the finances to just like get one of those sick shelving systems yeah. that go on the ceiling. Oh and yeah, those are so cool. I do want to do that eventually, but that's just a process. It's, like, yeah, it's low on my list of things to care about. And those are your places. So yep. basically, the places you're responsible for, your car and the garage, which usually is, you know, in most relationships, one one spouse says, yeah, you can have the garage. And then the other spouse says, I'll take the rest of the house. Maybe if you're lucky, one of the spouses gets a room. But, you know, usually there's one spouse that's like, I have control of this whole joint. And so, Steve, I, I really find it funny that probably the only messy spots in your house are the ones that you have control yes. over. And BJ, I mean, if you ask my wife, and I'm not saying all. A hundred times out of a hundred to say this, but maybe ninety times out of a hundred to would say she'd probably prefer it. I just live in the garage. There we go. <laughs> I, 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 the I was thinking it. I thought I'd be nice today, and I didn't right. say it. That way, <laughs> the slob doesn't work its way into the house. All right, so let's go, uh, Vicky. How about you? How many messy spots do you have in your house? My whole house. Ah. Oh, oh congratulations. you got a lot going on right now. Yeah. You got like your parents living there and everything. I, I got mom, dad, brother, and baby brother. And baby brother comes with a lot of toys. So I will every single day move all of his toys out of my room because he does this thing where he loves my room and he'll bring his favorite toys and then just pile them on my bed. So I will move them out every single day, and then by the end of the night, I have a huge pile of toys amongst the huge pile of clothes that I end up doing. Like It does start with the kids. I think that, you know, everybody has the best intentions, and then once kids enter the picture, because Vicky, that was our house mm-hmm. for many, many years with Joey and Sarah growing up, it was like... Okay, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. Maybe, you know, I, I, there's nowhere to go where they don't basically go, this is my place to put this here. It's like, and Sarah with all of her headless Barbie dolls that were just found oh, everywhere. Geez. And, you know, like, well, you know, it hey, sounds like little, the plot to a horror film. Yeah, right. Or a yeah, serial oh. killer. Yeah, well, you know, she's a special girl. No, it's a place uh, that's not messy, but it's a place that definitely I, I feel like I'm not very organized because I just stack things in there and eventually get to it is the laundry room. You're just like, you know, I'll fold all the clothes. I'll do the laundry mostly for our house, and I'll fold everything. But then I just put it on top of the dryer, and I'm like, I'll get to it later. And then all of a sudden, I've got this giant, like, stack of clean clothes above the dryer. But it's all folded, so it's not really a mess. It's just you, there where it shouldn't be. But it should go back where it belongs. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, but Steve, half of us have what they call a laundry chair. I mean, so they, <laughs> I where do. basically that's where all your laundry goes. I'm about to install what I would be. It would be like the the laundry shelf. I want to put like a little shelf in there so that way I don't have to stack it on the the dryer. I can stack it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to let you know, by the way, that uh, the number one reason people say they got messy parts of the house is, in fact, the kids. So, I mean, Steve, you're just you guys are just living the normal life. You and Vicky. That's just how it is. And it's uh, not, you most know, of the, the time, kids are what does it. It's yep. not just the toys too. I've realized it's whenever he comes into an area, everything that is in his arms reach that he can't touch immediately has to get put up higher. Mm-hmm. So. I now have all kinds of things that shouldn't be up on the high shelves, like food or scissors or anything that I might have been using for a project. All my projects or craft stuff now is in a mess, like on the dresser or like anywhere he can't reach in my bathroom with the door locked. So I have like crystally gemmy things and, you know, sewing materials, like 
on my bathroom just so he doesn't touch it. So it's like oh, it's yeah. never ending. Well, yeah, Tatum, uh, Tatum's thing is she likes to just like pick things up and put it somewhere else and then eventually attempt to put it back, but never it goes back. So it's like we just have random like recycling. I'll just be like, yeah, I'll come home and I'm like, why is there an empty syrup bottle just in the living room? And it's like she just goes in there, grabs it, brings it out. Eventually it will work it back or I have to just pick up after her. Aww. Oh, man, see, this is, we talked about this, Steve. Your wife was going to become more and more relaxed with how things were going to be because the kid's just going to be the kid. You know, because wherever a kid spends the time, because normally, like, I'm the kind of person, if I saw, a, like, a, a syrup bottle in the living room, I'd be tripping. Be like, what are you talking, what, what's going on? But then the kid comes and you go, oh, yeah, that's what she does. Well, she just th- takes stuff and throws it everywhere. Until it goes outside into the actual recyclables, that now has become a temporary toy for her. So, like, you know, we've just kind of <laughs> accepted that it's now, this is just no different than, like, you know, her fake pots and pans or something like that. That's what really irritates me is when you buy the Little Tykes, and I don't know if Little Tykes is still, like, the favorite thing to buy as far as like the little tykes kitchen the little tykes workshelf and then you're seeing like joey we got him a little tykes workshelf and there's joey just basically playing with a can and you're just yeah. like are, are you kidding me i spent how many hundreds of dollars on this stupid thing and there's a can of peas that i could have just given him so he says i'm ex-military my house always clean if you clean as you go it's not not that hard to keep it that way you're not wrong like i find now that because of my wife it's not my doing but I am very, I'm way more aware of like, okay, let me just put that back right away. It takes extra two seconds, but it's so nice not to worry about it at the end of the day or at the end of the week when you do like a full house clean. Yeah, that's, this is why if you didn't spend any time in the military, you probably didn't learn a lot of good habits. And I didn't spend any time in the military, and I don't have a lot of good habits. He's absolutely right, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> so says, am I the only weirdo that folds the clothes as they come out of the dryer and then it goes straight to the dresser with them? Yeah, yeah, you are. At least for me. Yeah, well, I am too. I, I, I do do that. I mean, but uh, I, but I mean, Sarah. On the other hand, she's got the laundry chair. Her, I, I see how her and Jay Rubs do it, and I'm like, hey, you know what? They're like everybody else. I'm the weirdo. For the longest time, I, I'm getting better at this. I would just keep things in the dryer until I needed to wear it, and if I was worried it was wrinkled, I just put the the dryer on for like five minutes to heat it back up, <laughs> which is nice in the winter because then you put warm clothes on uh. in the morning. Oh, I can't beat that. I was going to laugh at you, but that actually is pretty, that, that's a good life hack right there. Yeah, things Ooh. don't come out of the dryer until other things need to go into the dryer. That used oh. to be my rule. See, I that's have the awful. dumbest system. I have two laundry baskets, one for dirty, one for clean. So I'll put them in the clean basket once it's all out. And then it'll end up staying there for a couple days. And if I need something, I dig it through and it all ends up on the other side of my bed. Now, I'm a little person. I'm really short. I have a king size bed. So half the time... You know that side of the bed is meant for toys, clothes, and sometimes my computer. So, so half, so half your bed is a storage area. Yeah, you're becoming a hoarder. It's okay, because yeah, nobody Vicky. else is there. I need somebody no. to chill there so I don't make that mess. Oh. I hope. Vicky, we've seen we've, yeah. we've, now. Granted, you're a lot younger, but we but we've seen a lot of older people that have that kind of setup. But then if like I need to clean it off, like oh if somebody's coming yeah. by, I'll just put all the clothes back in the <laughs> basket and throw it in the closet. Okay, <laughs> I don't see that. This is um, uh, on the next episode of Hoarders, right? Yeah. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. What pop star had the 2010 hit album titled Teenage Dream? Right, well, I hope it's not R. Kelly. No. Okay. <laughs> um, is that Katy Perry? Yes. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you want a shot at beating Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Mix at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com.